Hello viewers, today we will be repairing a Honeywell fan. This is a model HT-904. The informations are nearly invisible because it doesn't have any contrast to it. It is made in the China, unfortunately. And supposedly it doesn't run very well. And let's see what we have here. It's a freak show already. Plug is all jacked up. So we're going to have to go ahead and fix that first. I don't quite understand how this happens, but... It's not the only thing I don't understand in this world. Okay, let's see if it'll fit in the plug now. Much better. Okay, that'll be outtake number one. And I'll plug in the power bar. Okay. Okay, so we're going to have a typical locked bearing situation here. Fairly common uh, among these fans. Okay, so we have six. I think there's six. Yeah, there's six screws on the back that we're going to remove. And that should release the front guard. Actually, I don't want to use those bits. I'm going to use the little ones. Yeah, that's that's really going to work great. Er, I got to go to sleep. Okay, this should split open now. Huh, it kind of did. There we go. So we'll set that piece aside for cleaning. Oh god, it's very stiff. So now we have a dilemma here. We have a stupid thing on the shaft that holds the blade on. And it looks like somebody made some kind of an effort to remove it. I hate these things. They should be banned. It's like those stinking iPhones. This is planned obsolescence built into a product that really shouldn't go obsolete. And it's very irritating because a group of stupid people sits around a table and says, How can we rip people off? by selling them this fan and they say oh well we'll make it so that it fails prematurely how do we do that let's spend an extra half a cent on every fan and put some stupid non-removable thing on the shaft so people can't get the blade off to service it and then when it breaks they'll just throw it out and buy a new one that's terrible it's a terrible mindset and it's plaguing stupid corporate America and it needs to stop anyways that's just my educated opinion on the situation. Regardless, we have to get this off. And the problem is, it's not meant to come off. And it's not meant to go back on. And if it breaks when you're taking it off, it's not going to go back on. And if it doesn't go back on, the blade may come off. So what we're going to do is we're going to very carefully attempt to remove this. I have a small common style screwdriver and I'm going to begin prying up where the flat part of the shaft is. There's going to be two wedges that will come up. going to take some effort 
there it goes. So that's one of them. And then let's see if I can get the second. You know, you don't want to bend it too much because it'll end up snapping. I think for the second one, I'm going to switch tools. I'm going to use a, a, a pointing thing. And I'm going to see if I can pull the other one up. Okay, now we're making some progress, but see, that just broke. I don't think it's broken quite enough yet to make it unusable. So, it's starting to come off now. So what I'm going to do is kind of get the screwdriver under it and just very carefully try to keep prying it up. You don't want to pry from the outside because that will be kind of productive to what we're trying to do. Pry from the inside only. And there we go. So this isn't totally ruined. I'll be able to kind of press this down a little bit and reuse it hate these things. They should not be used. There should be a bolt on there that you can unscrew or a nut rather that you can unscrew and it's easy and there's no irritation. But that's not what we have. Okay, so when we get past that the blade should just pull off like that. And I'll put that aside to get washed. So now we have the motor, which is locked pretty tight, and it's very sticky. Oh, this is a CAS motor. What year is this one made? This must be an older one. I don't see a date on the UL sticker. Oh, there, is that it? Yeah, 2008? This is copyright date. I don't know. Well, anyways, to remove the motor, we're going to start with the two bottom screws. And then while we're in here, we're also going to remove this, this uh, screw here. back we're going to pull up on the switch and it'll come off in the back in the front we're going to remove this plastic piece okay and now we're going to remove the motor A lot of dust in here. This must have a lot of hours on it. And now the switch. This model is uh, interestingly enough. It's not um, crimped together with those stupid non-reusable things. This has standard wire nuts on it, so this will be relatively easy. I'm going to pull this switch assembly out of here. And what I want to do is remove these two wire nuts that are the leads to the mains. And it looks like these are soldered together, which is okay. I'm just going to cut that off. So I'm going to cut this wire here. And I'm going to cut this wire here. Okay, looks so we have a tie wrap in here, so I'm going to cut that off as well. Okay, and now we can remove the motor. Get off of there. Okay. So there was a the motor. 
and now the cord this is another kind of a tricky situation here cord has a knot tied into it, which I don't understand why because there is a proper strain relief mechanism here we're going to have to get this knot out of the cord which is going to be a little bit difficult now it's worth noting that this part here, the removal of these wires is uh, more for the cleaning process than the actual repair itself I like to remove the motor for the purposes of thoroughness of cleaning um, if you just want to fix it and get on with the day you don't have to go through this part okay I'm just gonna cut it out so the cord is now going to be an inch shorter but that's not going to be an issue okay so now we have access to this strain relief thing and what needs to happen is it has to get pushed through to the other side I usually start with this portion actually let's see is it easier to pull through this way or the other way yeah I'm gonna start on this side and this is a very awkward angle to work with but uh, I'm gonna start trying to pry it through this side probably gonna have to get a longer screwdriver this one's gonna be too too uh, thick yeah, they did not make this easy there we go now that it's partially through we can probably force it through the rest of the way like that okay and now we're going to open that up that comes off where it comes through and so now all these plastic pieces we can just wash those with ease okay and that will be scrap wire this will just be not very useful for anything and that's gross and okay here's the cord so I'm gonna go ahead and clean all that stuff now and then we'll come back and get some more video on fixing the motor okay the plastic components have been washed now we're gonna move on to the motor I want to get this powered up so I'm gonna go ahead and strip the wires out and reconnect them And this is just for a, a brief moment, so I'm not going to worry about figuring out the, collect, the correct polarity. I will deal with that when uh, it's rewired permanently. These wire nuts are deplorable. What the hunks of junk? Either that or I didn't strip it back far enough. This 
this doesn't work then these wire nuts are a junk. They worked okay. Alright, it was user error. Okay, so what I'd like to do is see if I can get this freed up just enough so that it'll run because the shaft really needs to be cleaned off and uh, if I can get it to run that will go much much faster so this is not going to suffice for proper lubrication but I'm just going to see if I can make it run by putting a drop or two in the front I'm guessing not based on how locked up this is but we'll give it a try That's not going to work. tell if that's a hole in the it is a hole okay so let me see if I can get some oil in that hole perhaps it's the rear rear bearing that's locked up yeah it was it just freed up Interesting. Okay. There we go. Now it's running. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a ticker towel here, pull this hair off of it, and then I'm going to put some cleaning oil on the shaft. And I'm going to power this on. And we want to get the surface of this shaft very 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 clean before we pull this bearing off. Okay. See the motor is freeing up nicely. Now this is kind of jagged up here at the top where that stupid piece of metal was. So what we're going to have to do is I'm going to get some sandpaper out and we're going to go ahead and file this down. See how that did. Um, now it's still kind of rough. I'm going to get. Uh, this, uh, oh, jeez. I'm going to get a coarser sandpaper out. And let's try to go at it with this. This piece is a little too big. Whatever. Okay, I think that'll be okay. Yeah, that'll suffice. Now I'm going to go back over it with this. 
get in the, because uh, that, that paper was really rough. And restore a nice smooth surface again with this. I'm actually going to go one gray finer too uh, with this. And make sure this is really got a good smooth surface too with no abrasives. Okay, that's feeling pretty good now. Okay, we should be ready to pull the bearing off. Actually, the motor is already freed up quite a bit. Alright, so to get this apart, so what a dust down here, I'll just brush that off first. Okay, there's oil all over this motor. I believe the owner of this fan made an attempt to get it going again and they were not successful although at least they made a valiant effort which is more than what can be said about most people okay so these two screws on the front come off Because this has been sanded appropriately, this should slide right off with ease, just like that. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to clean out this rear bearing, because that seemed to lock up. So I'm going to take a cleaner ticker towel and make it into the size of about the bearing and clean this out you can see some gummed up oil came out of there that's what's contributing to the problem so I'd like to get all that out of there before we reassemble. Okay, and now we're going to clean the shaft off. This has definitely been running dry for quite some time. You can see the scoring and abrasion starting to happen here on the on the surface of the shaft. It's on the front too. Okay, and clean the front bearing as well. Very surprised the rear bearing was locked up. Usually it's the the front one that goes okay so that's that now we have two oils that we can use here we can use the oil for fans you can see right there on the package it says fans fans you notice on the other one here it doesn't say fans anywhere but this one it does in fact say fans. I know this is a difficult concept for some of the viewers but this is what it is the blue can for fans or this this can which is specifically for electric motors electric motors whereas this one here does not specify electric motors at all okay so since this one is already open I'm just going to use this one 
and this is kind of weird. I think what I'm going to do is put several drops of oil into this and let it kind of sit down at the bottom and then uh, put this, uh, it's already leaking out, we don't want that at all put this back onto the motor here put some oil onto the shaft please come out okay And now I'm going to put some oil on the, the whole length of the shaft because the bearing is going to slide over the whole thing. And I'll put some inside the bearing itself. And then on it goes. Spinning very freely. Okay. And now these screws are going to go back in. And I don't want these as tight as they were. I think that's excessive. So. That's good enough. Okay, now this is probably locked up again. No, actually it's not that bad. Uh, but what we want to do here is we're going to take a screwdriver with a plastic handle. I'm just going to strike the shaft a couple times. And that will take care of all of our alignment issues. You can see this is now spinning very freely. And it's ready to be reassembled. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, we're back now and we have all the plastic parts have been cleaned up. So we're ready to begin reassembly. So I'm going to start by disconnecting the motor again. And we're going to feed this lead wire in through the hole on the back. Like this. And I'm going to restrip it again, so we'll just cut this off for now. And I'm going to... Why is that wet? Anyways, I'm going to insert this thing again. It's going to be a little difficult to do because I'm going to move it up the wire just a okay, quarter inch or so to compensate for that which was cut off. Actually, we don't have to do that because I'm not going to tie that knot in it. So I'll just put it back where it was. And this closes like that. And this, this clip-like piece goes on the outside. And this just kind of pushes into place. It's not very easy to do. It's going to take some coercing, but I usually start with the the non-open side, the other side here. Put that in first. Get the clip through, put that in first. And then once it's kind of like this, I'll take the screwdriver again and, and I coerce it in the rest of the way. And this is having none of it today. Oh wow, this is really being a pain. There it goes. Okay, that's in place. Now for the motor. What 
we're going to do is we want to pay attention to the polarity on the cord. So on the cord, we know that the smaller prong is the high side. And so in this case, it's the non-striped side of the wire. And one side has this uh, kind of like a striping to it, and the other side does not. So the high side is the side that's not. So inside the V in here, we're going to identify that this wire is the high side and this is the common. And so on the motor, what we want to do is attach the high side to the switch. So the switch takes the power in from here, this wire, labeled line or load. I think it's line. And then a one, two, three, four or just one, two, three, three speed switch. And so this line wire, we're gonna attach to the, to the high side of the electrical cord so that when you turn the switch off, there's no power in the motor. You could wire it the other way and it still work, but it's safer to do it this way because if you attach the high side to the motor, we, the motor return, when you turn the switch off, the motor's gonna stop because the electricity's not flowing but the motor is still alive and it, it's okay, it doesn't really matter, but it's just a safety precaution to wire it this way. So that's what we're going to do. So I have to restrip this, which I should have done before I attached the strain relief, but the amount of grief that produced, I'm not going to undo it just to strip it out. have locked closed for some reason. Okay. Get this motor ready to go here. And we'll make these connections. So we're going to take this brown wire and that's going to get joined with this bottom wire. You could solder these connections together if you wanted to. I think that's completely unnecessary in this case. <laughs> and I'm not going to do it. It's also getting late and I'm tired so I'm not going to take any additional steps that are not needed. Okay, now we'll connect the black wire to the common side of the mains. And after that we want to make sure these wires are not going to come out of their connections. They don't seem to want to, so that's good. That's a really good length that'll sit right in there like that. And now the switch can slip back in here and I want to make sure that it's in the right orientation so that the numerical labeling lines up. So I believe the motor was on speed 3 at the time, so that's correct. Why is this wet still? Something is wet over here. I don't know what it is. Oh, anyways. So with that, like that, that'll sit there, the motor will go in here. The two bottom screws of the motor line up with those screw holes there. And there's these two studs here on either side, a little bit out of the frame, but or towards the edge of the frame rather. Those studs go in the bottom two holes and then the screws go through the top two holes there. Like this. That's being a little bit annoying. OK, 
Okay, we're going to go with that, I think. This wire's not moving over as much as I'd like it to, but that's fine. don't think that's really a problem. Okay. A screwdriver needs to be charged up. Okay, let's give it a quick test here, make sure the wiring is correct. Okay, that is running. Spin down time is good. We'll do a quick electricity check. We got electricity on the wire, and there should be none on the motor. So that's checked out. All right, now we can put this piece back in. We want to be careful that this doesn't mess with the wires too much. It is kind of forcing them into place. We don't want anything to come undone. Alright, and now we have to deal with the front part of this stupid clip thing. Let's give it a test with the... Just to make sure everything is still good. Okay, that is working. You can see it's spinning very freely now. The bearings are much happier than they were before. And, I mean, realistically, it's probably never going to come off, but there's two things you could do. You could fill this up with hot glue. I've done that before when these stupid things catastrophically fail. Uh, but in this case, what I'm going to do is take a tool here and just kind of pinch this down a little bit. Very, very small amount. I'm going to pinch down the tabs here. And then... I'm going to put this back on. I'm going to say it's too loose. i got to pinch it down some more. I think this is not the best tool to use. Let's try this one. Yeah, it's working much better. Because the shaft, the, the, the shaft got sanded down, it's a little bit smaller than it was before. That's why this is not fitting on correctly. Now it's fitting on correctly. Stupid thing. It's an outrageous way of keeping the blade on. There should be a nut on there. Not that stupid thing. Anyways, that's on there now. It's not going to come off. So now we're ready to put the guard on. And this will be complete. Okay, do a final test run. Hi. It's actually moving quite a bit of air. Two. 
one. That's working nicely. Thank you for watching.